Finally, sodium ion technology is here and we finally get to use it, or at least see if we can use it because that's a problem is that the technology is a little bit different. So are we even able to use this? Now this is meant for your car as it is a 850 cold cranking amp battery. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for either lithium or something else to come out because with the new cars that are out today, they use a lot more power than they used to. So your batteries end up needing to be replaced a lot more often at about three to four years. Sometimes you get lucky at five years for the lead acids, but most of the time when it comes to my car, or even my truck, I have to replace the batteries about every three and a half years. Now, sodium ion technology is being talked about a lot, and the technology is definitely there, but is it really ready for us? Now, I bought this battery for about $200 on Amazon, and I didn't really see much for information as far as reviews or anything, which we will talk about in a minute. But when I saw this was available for your car, I was like, well, why not try it out? Now, this is 850 cold cranking amps versus the battery I have now, which is about 660 cold cranking amps. Now, this isn't really meant to be compared to a lithium iron phosphate battery or even a lithium ion. It's totally different. Now, when you look at the voltage drop on this, as far as when you're using it, it's real linear. It just basically drops right off if you look here at this little chart versus a lithium iron phosphate battery, the voltage stays steady until almost the very end and then it drops off. So if you remember using a lead acid battery in either a RV or your car, you would actually start to see the lights start to dim as the voltage starts to drop. And then eventually the lights would just go off. Versus the new lithium batteries, they constantly will stay bright until really the very end, you'll start to notice, oh, the lights are kind of getting dim and then boom, they shut off. Now again, this is really just meant for your car are not really for off-grid purposes. Off-grid stuff, the lithium iron phosphate batteries are just so much better still. The round trip efficiency is better. The amount of power output, cycle life is better. There are so many more benefits when it comes to LFP batteries versus sodium ion. The technology is coming and eventually sodium ion will be better, but we're just not there yet. Now we did do some testing on this. I did a 0.2 C rate discharge just to kind of see what the capacity is on this. At 144 watts, which was the discharge, rate, I ended up really only getting about 654 watt hours out of this battery. It's rated for 720 watt hours, but that's just kind of a common test that we do on certain batteries. But again, this is meant for cold cranking amps and not really a deep cycle battery. Now, another thing with sodium ion batteries is that the charging voltage on this is kind of different. It's actually a higher voltage at 15.6 volts is where this cuts off. Versus lead acid batteries and others, you will set the charging voltage at around 14.4 volts. And that is also what your car is going to be putting out is around 14.4 once you start driving and it'll fluctuate a little bit up and down, but it really never goes to 15 volts. And that ends up being one of the problems with using this in today's cars is that they have a lot of smart charging features. They have smart alternators. And so when you get outside of certain parameters, it'll probably throw a code or it's going to end up throwing a little warning message up on the screen and it'll probably say charging system fault or something of the sort. So that's what we're going to test here today in just a couple minutes is we're going to see if this actually works inside of a vehicle and will the charging systems function correctly. Now, when it does come to the specs on this battery, this is where I did find a couple things a little bit odd. Now, if you look at the specs on this battery on top, it'll actually say charging voltage is 15.6, which is fine, but it says max charge current is 60 amps. But if you look right below that on the battery, it says max discharge current is 100 amps. Now, if you look online or if you look in the manual, it actually says that max charge and max discharge is 60. So there's a little bit of discrepancies there, but I did do a load test on this and I held a 70 to 80 amp load on this for about 10 minutes and it had no problem holding it. I then exceeded that load and ran it all the way up to about 173 amps for only a couple minutes just to see if anything would happen, if it would shut off, which Nothing changed, it just kind of kept drawing it, and that's basically a 2400 watt load. So I eventually canceled that test just due to probably a meltdown that would start to happen with inside the battery, but there's nothing that really controls this thing to shut it off. And again, it's meant for short bursts of energy because it's just starting a car for a couple seconds and then that's about it. Now, when it comes to the reviews, at least on Amazon, because that's where I got it, and I am always a little bit skeptical when you see something new and everything is always five stars. Well, here, check this out a little bit. I'm gonna throw some information on the screen here because Jessica, she ends up saying that I was skeptical about sodium ion tech at first, but this sodium ion battery has won me over. 
Compared to lithium batteries, it's more stable and doesn't overheat even when I use it for hours to jumpstart other cars. Jumpstarting other cars for hours? I'm assuming she probably is like a tow truck driver or something. It says a 0.2C rate charging is efficient, fully charges in five to six hours, which that's correct, which fits her daily routine. Interesting daily routine for Jessica. Jessica, oh Jessica, just, you know, I, you know, tow truck Jessica. That's what we're gonna call her. Anyway, we're also gonna check out Jennifer. She says for a commercial vehicle that runs daily, battery life and costs matter a lot. This sodium ion battery has exceeded my expectations. It's lasted 100 plus full cycles without losing any capacity. I'm not really sure what she means by this, by 100 cycles, is she actually depleting this and charging it back up because that's not what it's meant for. Now, if you're starting and stopping your car, on average, you can do about 80 to 100 starts a month if you think about it, because if you go to work, you start it, you come home, you start it, there's two right there. Maybe you stop at the market, there's another one. So 80 to 100 a month, as far as starting, is pretty typical. But Jennifer says she doesn't lose any capacity and the 2000 plus cycle life promise looks achievable. So if you look at how they advertise this, it says 4000 plus cycles, which I would hope you get at least half that at the 2000 plus cycles. So the wide temperature range is a lifesaver, which works perfectly in the summer heat waves and winter chills, which, you know, these do actually have good winter performance. If you're tired of replacing lead acid batteries every year, every year? This is a smart term investment. Now I've never replaced lead acid batteries every year unless it's been in like a jet ski or something and you let it sit and you don't charge it. But when it comes to replacing a lead acid battery every year in a vehicle, that's kind of unheard of unless it's defective. Now I am all for getting away from lead acid batteries in a vehicle, but the problem is, is that we haven't seen any of that technology go to the vehicles that we use every day, like our trucks and our cars. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to replacing diesel batteries, you have to buy two and that's $500 right there every three and a half years. So I'm excited for the tech and I hope it's ready and available, but we're gonna go throw this in the car, then we're gonna tear it down and see what it looks like inside. So let's get out to the car and see if it actually works. Look at the difference in the weight between this lead acid battery, 37 and a half pounds, much heavier. Okay, we're gonna be using this GMC Acadia as our test vehicle, and we are going to do some preliminary testing with this battery first, just to get some numbers, then we will switch into the new battery. Okay, so we're gonna hook up our clamps and check our voltage of this battery, which this one is not terribly old. And if we take a look at our resting voltage, this is right about 12.4, hopefully you guys can see that, about 12.5 volts. Okay, now we'll start up the vehicle. So that shows a max of 14.5 amps, which honestly pretty low. And a minimum of two amps, that was just when the vehicle was on. But only 14.5, it's kind of crazy, right? So now if we look at our charging voltage right now at the battery, it's at 15 volts. And so if I remove this, that goes away. And I put this back on right here at the battery. 14.9 volts is where we're at. So now we'll switch out the batteries now, take a look at our voltage. We'll do that same test just to see if there's really any difference. Okay, now I didn't charge this battery all the way up to the 15 volts. I only put it at actually what the normal battery voltage should be for a normal car. The normal charging voltage is about 14.4 volts for a car if it's charging the battery. And then the resting voltage for a car battery, typically a lead acid, is going to be around that upper 12, 12, 8, 12, 9 after it's shut off and it's sit for a few hours. Okay, so I'm directly connected to the battery terminals and you can see right about 14.3 volts. So now we're gonna hook this up, do the same test with the cranking amps, see what we get, and then also check our charging voltages. Okay. 
So this time it only set a max of four amps. That really just doesn't seem right to me. I don't know what's going on here, but this is... So at the moment, it seems like the voltage regulator is not liking this battery. I mean, that's at least what this is telling me. Okay, so I got it hooked up to a different position now, and maybe this is a little bit better. So now we're... Well, there it goes again. Let's go inside and see what's going on. Yeah, so look at that right there. So 14 volts. So to me, something isn't right here because... I should be at 14.4 volts and as I rev up the motor the voltage isn't changing so something is not right and basically what that means to me is the voltage regulator and the alternator does not like this battery so we're gonna shut this off and then uh, swap out the other one make sure I didn't damage anything but uh, I don't think this battery is obviously gonna be compatible with most vehicles out there because none of them are built for it Okay, now we have the original battery back in. Let's just make sure everything works correctly. Ooh, washer fluid. And there goes our voltage. So, 13, 14, ooh, 14, 3, 14, 5, and back up to 14.6. So now everything seems to be working like it should be. And there we go, 14.8. So it's basically charging right now. Also the AC system is running. So, but at least, uh, you know, our charging voltage is up because obviously before it was stuck at 14. It wasn't doing anything, so. Okay, so we're gonna take a look inside this battery and you know, I don't recommend this for people who have never done anything like this before, but there are things you should do. Like one is you want to have your safety glasses, which I normally don't show this part because I normally just do a voiceover. But I also have a mask, which these are chemical cartridges, which probably time for new ones. I also have a fire blanket that I always have on handy, which I have three of these. I have one in the house, one in the RV, one in the garage. My little fire extinguisher, which I'm due for a new bigger one because this is just my little one and the other one I had was expired. And I also have a hose ready just in case if the worst should happen. But one thing with sodium ion batteries, they're a lot more stable. So that's one thing that's kind of cool is that you don't have to worry about like thermal runaway or if you puncture these, it's not really the same as like, you know, the old lithium ion batteries where they just take off and go until all the energy is released. Okay, so this is interesting because I don't know if you saw it, but on top here, the BMS board, it's actually from Vader. So that's kind of cool that these guys are actually making this battery now. It doesn't look like the greatest build. Let me show you here. And there is our pack. So it looks like on this side, you got the little cardboard kind of with some wires under here. Let's get more of this off. Garbage, garbage, more garbage. All right, check out these leads on this copper bus bar. These are all soldered on, which, I mean, to me, that just doesn't look like the best job. It could have been done a little bit better. I mean, if you've seen batteries before, this isn't real bad, but it's also not great. But if you look at the soldering job on this side, especially over here, I mean, this just does not look, I don't know. This could have been done a lot better in my opinion. This isn't great. 
It just seems like this was done like really quick to me. I mean, when you look at the quality of other batteries out there and how they're put together, but yeah, when you look at the copper lugs here, they also soldered these as well. It doesn't really look like they crimped them that good, but check out all the MOSFETs on top of this thing, a whole bunch. Let's check this out. If you look at the little writing here, it says it looks like 900 amp BMS version one. This is from Vader again. And it looks like we have three balance leads right here. We got B1, B2, B3, B4. So the white ones, these should be our balance leads. And then we have, it looks like one temperature sensor right here, right on top of the BMS. And so there's a look at our cells right there. So look at that three volt, 30 watt hour per cell. And here is the bottom, how they tack welded all of these together. So look at that, it looks like Oh no, that one's on there pretty good. Some of these look like they were not on very strong. It just doesn't seem like it's as good as it could have been. Now when it comes to this battery, it doesn't seem like it's something we're going to be able to use in everyday applications like our automobiles. Now where you possibly could use this is inside like maybe an older boat or something that doesn't have all the electronics in it that are smart. The only thing I could see a problem is that the alternator might continually try to charge at a certain rate putting extra loads on the alternator, so maybe prematurely burning it out. I don't know because I don't have something to actually test that and give you long-term feedback. So as far as using this in everyday applications, I just don't think it's ready yet. Now I've never claimed to be a battery expert. I've learned along the way, like many of you out there, but it doesn't seem like this is something that is ready for the market, at least on a wide range of applications. So as far as this battery goes, I don't really recommend it, at least based on my personal opinion, as the technology is probably a little bit ahead of what we're able to actually use it on. I thought it was pretty interesting that it is a name brand that we do see on other companies out there. And a lot of the stuff that we do find ends up just being relabeled from the same manufacturers anyway, which is not uncommon. We see that in everyday uses, Toyota, Lexus, Ford, Mercury, Lincoln, it's all the same stuff. Even today we have Ford and Chevy sharing the same transmission, which is absolutely stupid in my opinion, but hey, that's just the world we live in. Hope you guys liked the video and I hope to see you in another one.